Alrighty, Sharp Customs. You probably weren't expecting this this soon. It's Sunday, March the 3rd, I believe. Uh, today was a awesome day. Tomorrow we're supposed to hit double digits here in southern Ontario. I was going to put on a nice, sunny, bright colored shirt. Eh, that's not me. That's not me. You'll get to see it. You'll get to see it in the next few months. I'll have my shorts and... Yeah, whatever. Forget about it. So, tonight, I figured I would uh, give you some content to watch. Um, I'm going to talk about the 52 Chevy. Uh, the camera girl's truck, because we haven't done any of that. Uh, she put her back valence in. I, I want you all to see this. I'm going to turn on the flashlight. That thing was rotted like there was no tomorrow down around the bottom. Swiss cheese. She fixed it all. Yes, yeah, Swiss cheese. She said it, not me. She got it. Look at this. She's got it all in. She's got it all cleaned up. Don't, I'm not really sure what she's doing if she's going to carry on fixing it. I don't know if she's mm -hmm. going to rocker guard it, or paint it, or whatever. Uh, she cleaned out the inside. She's got all underneath, believe that, underneath the dash is all painted. Like, she's going crazy, man. She's going crazy. She's going crazy. She got her headers painted. Uh, they're just bolted on, kind of temporary. Uh, she got her nice aluminum fan. Radiator, not fan, what am I saying? Or aluminum radiator, electric fan, kind of just temporary in place so she can figure out her rad hoses and stuff. Uh, she's got her uh, AC unit here. This is the AC unit for the 52 Chevy. Oopsie. This, this is the uh, open and close vent. So she's got, you know, little bits of chrome, aluminum. She's got those nice chrome hinges we painted. She wants to chrome, powder chrome, the vent. So when it's open, it kind of looks chrome. Not a bad idea, I think. So she's been picking away at this. Uh, while I've been doing basically... Crap tons of fiberglass work, you know that. Um, here we've got GT40 number two. Uh, this one I'm going a little different. I'm not doing separate pieces, I'm doing it as a one piecer, kind of like the way I did the uh, truck bodies. Uh, I'm not sure about it. I'm not sure about it. Um, gel coat. Went in nice today. I know for a fact that there's a couple flaws here and there in the gel coat. Not, not a big deal. Now, I'm going to have to, you know, angel hair, glass, of course, you know, up in there. Kind of sucks getting the fiberglass in there. Same as in the back. It's a little tricky. Um, nice thing is, is with the unwaxed materials I'm using nowadays uh, I could pick away at it it's not a big rush it's not like I gotta go at it and go at it and go at it and you know till the job is done I always thought fiberglass was kinda like that but I've learned you know throughout the last year mainly that now I can do a little bit and I come back the next day do a little bit more you know it's kinda the way I do it but anyhow, that's number two, the idea behind doing it as a one piece, not, not kind of happy with the joints. And I will show you on the other GT40. Um, they're okay, but I figured, you know, by splitting the mold, putting a dam here, Making the rear piece, making the center piece, making the front piece. I figured each piece, just by putting a, a small dam there, I figured each piece would uh, 
would line up really good, you know. But when it comes down to the, you know, the trim, cut, fit, you know, making it all kind of, kind of meld together, we'll take a walk over here. We'll look at this. We'll look at this bad boy sitting on the table. I've been picking away at it. I'm kind of today. I've been all over the place. I've been. I've worked a little bit on GT number two. I did some work on this. You can see I put some. Uh, I've got some fillers kind of here and there, just some just some spots that need some light, what I call light touching up. As you can see, we got all the windows cut. We got the vent holes cut. We got these vent holes cut. Uh, still got to do some cutting in the back here. I got some pieces to cut out. Uh, I'll get to those. Um, I did make some aluminum rails for the tub pretty pretty cool really but here you go there you go front hinges open you can see the rails they're not they're not fancy but they do the trick because I'm gonna think that the owner of this particular quarter scale model he probably gonna change some of that up Maybe not. Maybe he'll keep some of it. Maybe he'll support it. Maybe he'll put his suspension off of it. That was a thought that I had. Maybe he'll build a whole uh, frame section. I have no idea. This is just the way I built it. Uh, it can all be unbolted. But this is the stuff I'm talking about right here. So, you can see this gap through here. This is the stuff I want to try and clean up. You know, it's kind of okay, but for me, it's just not, it's not true. It's not true. I'll fix it. Don't worry about it. We got the back, same thing. This, this, you know, the gap line across here, it's not bad. Now, what I do have to make here is I have to make a flange everything needs a flange let's like the front here when I open it I've got my I've got my windshield flange for the front to close again now in the back I don't I got the same system same hinge system rails hinge they're glued on they're bolted but I need a flange right here uh, as you can see, I've already done some sill work here, here, I put a sill, I put a sill here, and I put a sill here. Those have to be glassed yet, they're just hot glued at the moment. Hot glue, hot glue, hot glue is my friend. Get some glued on there, this closes up, but once I get the, the flange underneath there, then I will deal with the, you know, the, uh, the gap here. Uh, I could keep sanding. Uh, it's just, yeah, they just, not saying that, the, you know, overall, still looks great. Um, you know, there's little things here and there that, uh, you know, this one I am not making every single one of these like this one with the, uh, you know, the rear firewall, the rails, the hinged back. This is probably the only one I've still yet to cut my doors. I have to make hinges for the doors. I have to cut the doors. The doors will, they will function. They will open. Of course these wheels these wheels are just sitting here to make it look pretty uh, interesting fact with this this little creation so the GT 40 Grand Touring 40 inches 40 inches from the ground to this point now when I take a tape measure I'm at nine and a half I should, at quarter scale, I should be around 10, 
Um, now, the wheel sizes. So if you scale the wheels, I have a 1 12th scale model, and when I scaled the wheels, the rear wheels should be 7 inch, the front wheels should be 6 inch. Now, I kind of think these wheels kind of, they kind of suit the deal. Um, and that's totally up to the builder. That's up to each and every builder that basically uh, I'm going to say acquires one of these body shells from me. Um, I should, what I should do is I will be shipping these and like these sills here, these lower sills, uh, they are actually fiberglass, but they're fiberglassed to the rear firewall and the front bulkhead. So that is what is holding those in place. They're fiberglass there. But, uh, you know, when I start pushing these out, there'll be five pieces. You'll have your center section. Uh, you will have your nose. You will have your tail. And you will have two side skirts. So, uh, what I'd like to show quickly, if I can... So, you know, minus the rails, these things are just, uh, they're just kind of sitting on here with some bolts. This is kind of my idea, and this is for shipping purposes. So there we have the nose. Look at that. That nose fits right on there. Pop the back bolt out if I can. And we get the we get the tail nice and thick, nice and sturdy, like one eighth of an inch thick. Well, it fit yesterday. Today it doesn't fit because I know exactly what happened. I put these, uh, I put these, I can show you what, what the difference is. These little plywood sills here that I put on. Regardless, basically, one way or the other, there you go. Look at that. There you go. Look at that. Minus the rails, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, we're looking at probably, you know, 21, let's say 24 with some packing, by around 15, by around 15, I know, I know that that looks funny, but, what you don't understand is that that small box it cost me way less to you know ship wherever around the world America Canada you know that cost me way less than when we did the truck bodies this, those truck bodies those truck bodies I cannot move those things because it's a four foot, two foot by two foot box, and, you know, they cost a fortune, you know, send one to California right now, probably be around $500, that's crazy, it's just crazy stuff, for something that weighs seven, eight pounds, that's why I'm building these in, you know, basically five pieces, so, Another little thing I wanted to just add into the video is there's, that's basically the back window I cut out. 
So what I'm doing is, is you've already seen the other videos. I'm doing gel coat, angel hair, or half ounce, uh, six ounce chop, a layer of six ounce cloth, and then another layer of six ounce chop. And what I want you to see is I want you to see what happens. This is kind of interesting. So this one does not have the six ounce chop over top of the cloth. We, uh, something happened there. We kind of neglected to, to do the six ounce chop, but, but trust me, it's there. It's there. It got put in after. But the cool factor is, watch this. So when you have the cloth, the woven cloth, check that out. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do it again. That took a lot of strength to break that. But when you go against the grain, when you go against, against the cloth, let's go the other way. Let's go the total opposite direction. Look at that. See how easy I did that? That's the strength in just using one layer of cloth, six ounce cloth. And uh, if I had it smushed, I had some other pieces here. I threw them out during the garbage. I had a piece of six ounce cloth between two layers of six ounce chop. And you could bend it both directions the way I just did that without it breaking and uh, yeah that's uh, that's good quality and the I brought this up for one reason and one reason only because I know that a lot of these bodies that are manufactured and you know pushed all over the place they're made solely with chop Nobody uses cloth. Why don't they use cloth? Well, because cloth is more expensive. But I put at least one layer of cloth in all my models because I want them to stand up. I want them to, uh, you know, I want them to last for the people who receive them. So there you have it. You got to see Camera Girl's little bit of her truck. You got to see GT40 number two in progress. You got to see number one GT40. Uh, everybody knows where this one is going. This one's going to California. When it's finished, don't know when that'll be. A couple more weeks. Um, because it's not that I'm a perfectionist. I just like the people that I deal with to be very happy. And I hope you enjoyed this little rundown tonight. I rolled in. I'm rolling out. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, thank you to all our regular subscribers. Thank you to all the subscribers. I hope you enjoy coming back to watch Shark Customs. Share, like, subscribe, hit that damn notification bell, and don't be afraid to comment, good or bad. Peace, I'm out.